I wanted to share with you today this beautiful frame of uh, Clovis points, a Folsom point, a Cumberland point, and a Folsom ultra thin pictured in the middle uh, alongside that beautiful Cumberland point. Now, these are all Greg Perino papered points, and most of them are published as well. So um, let's start with the uh, Folsom Ultra Thin right here. What a beautiful piece this is. This was uh, found in Utah, and uh, it was found in three sections, one, two, and then you can see the third section there. F found in three sections, can you imagine? And then glued back together. The flaking on this is just excellent paleo flaking. Look at the fine, fine edge work, which you would expect with Folsom. Very fine edge work. Look how thin that is. Oh my goodness. Well, that's why they call them Folsom Ultra Thins. And this is a, a, a really fine form here. It's a large piece. It's a large piece. It wouldn't be, you'd never find one this big if it hadn't been broken. And it was actually broken in three pieces, but the finder of this found all three pieces. Unbelievable. It has a little uh, uh, sheen on one blade edge, I believe, as you might expect on a Folsom Ultra Thin. And uh, it's just a very well flaked, extremely paper thin uh, Folsom Ultra Thin knife. So we have that. We have a beautiful hole in the wall agate. This is a hole in the wall agate Clovis. Dr. Michael Gramley was doing a, an article, or did an article, that's uh, featured in the Central States Archaeological Journal for January 2021. And uh, volume 68, this point is pictured in that journal. And it's made out of a hole-in-the-wall agate, which is just a beautiful lemon yellow type of translucent agate. Just a magnificent, magnificent specimen. It's been resharpened down quite a bit. And then we have a, 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 this. When I sent this to Greg Perino for papering, I sent it along with this Coshocton uh, piece from Ohio. And when I called Greg after he had received these, he said to me right off the bat, Richard, these are two of the finest Clovis points I've seen in a long time. Uh, this one comes from, uh, was plowed up in a field right outside of Troy, Donovan County, Kansas. Um, I believe it, it's made out of um, Florence Chert, although it is pictured in Dan Fox's Arrowhead of the Central Great Plains. If you don't have Dan Fox's a book I, I'd highly recommend it. Very good book. Uh, Dan took Lyle Nicolai and I out on the uh, Kansas River hunting uh, arrowheads and spear points, oh, uh, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, we found a lot of material on those gravel bars. And he took us to other locations as well, which I won't name because of Dan probably has those as proprietary locations. But uh, we did the Kansas River and let's say some of it's uh, uh, um, oh, some of its uh, uh, creeks in the area. But this is from Donovan County, plowed up. It's got two changes of patina. It must have been in a bone or antler handle. And from here to the base, from the top of the flute to the base, it's patinated a different kind of a creamy color. And from here all the way to the tip, it's got a spider web patina. Outrageous. And, of course, this has been washed many times. Greg Perino taught me to wash uh, points the minute you uh, look at them before you even buy them to make sure they're authentic because once you wash them the water will lie flat on a good point and you'll see the patina pop out on it because otherwise it's obscured with your skin oils you can't see the patina without washing it here we have the uh, uh, now this from here up here spider whip patina down here we have that uh, very creamy powdery look patina very nice Clovis point. Uh, Greg Perino uh, said it w underwent one major resharpening. That's it. So I would call it a grade 10 Clovis point. There's another beautiful Coshocton Flint one. Um, here's one that Greg Perino called Chronoid Quartz. It's got some opalescence to it. It's a beautiful Clovis point, translucent. Another beauty that's fluted all the way to the tip. There's the Folsom point there, beautiful little Folsom. Has a little ear damage on one ear, the lower ear there. Um, but at least a little flea bite, and, and, it, and it's fluted all the way from the base to the tip. Here we have another interesting piece here. 
when Dr. Michael Gramley examined this piece, uh, one one of the uh, base bases is is uh, lightly ground, and the other is very little ground, very little grinding, but some one of them is very lightly ground, which is a little unusual. You you might think that it'd be more heavily ground. Well, as Dr. Michael Gramley explained this, he he, he said to me, Richard. Uh, this was made as a Clovis knife to begin with. Not a Clovis point, but a Clovis knife. And uh, it's heavily patinated. It's just a really cool piece. And uh, so he said that Clovis knives like these were never ground. They didn't need to grind them when they were used as knives. They'd be socketed or put in antler or bone handles, no doubt and uh, wedged in there pretty well. So you, you didn't need to really grind them. You didn't have the sinew to worry about cutting through like you would on a uh, point mounted to a foreshaft. But uh, uh, all Clovis points that are used as points, spear points, were ground. So what he indicated here was this was originally made as a knife, and for some reason they needed to use it as a spear point at some time in its, in its useful life. And so then they ground the edges to then convert it to a spear point. It might have a little impact damage on the tip on one side there, and it's bent right there, It's got, and it's been a little re-tipped, reworked there. All in ancient times, of course. This is all paleo uh, workmanship. And, um, and then this one here is a nice piece. This is pictured in uh, right here. Uh, Clovis point made out of brown jasper found on the... Uh, can Caney River near Bartlesville, Oklahoma by Todd Ragsdale. It's pictured in the um, Paleo edition of Prehistoric America, special edition here. It goes back a few years. And uh, this is the point right here. Beautifully worked, beautifully patinated. One side's a little bit different color due to patination than the other side. One side's a little lark lighter, one side's a little darker. It's got that two-tone, beautiful look to it there. Just a really nice example. And uh, let's see here. No, this one here is another beauty. This was from Florida, a, a dive piece. It's, it's, it's coral. It's translucent, almost ruby red colored coral. And then when you look at it this way, it's golden. It's got a gold patina to it. Just outrageous river polish piece, a dive piece from, from Florida, Clovis Point. And then this one here is a beauty. This one is pictured in this book here, The Best of the Best. In fact, I think I have the pages here. They're kind of falling apart. Here, the, here it is right here. Let's take a look. Yes, there it is pictured right there. That's it right there. That book was uh, uh, published by Kevin Dowdy and John Sewell, and I got this from um, Bernie Carr. Bernie Carr had bought this from um, John Sewell, I believe, uh, and uh, it's a river-polished Clovis Point from uh, either southern Georgia, the Flint River area, or, um, or, uh, or in Florida there, made out of Coastal Plains Chert. And just a beautiful Clovis point, really. As as uh, they indicated in their book, uh, they reserved just the center section for the best points, and they were calling this um, the best of the best, which which I believe it is. And then, of course, we have this beautiful Cumberland point here. Now, this Cumberland point has been pictured in the um, Overstreet Guide for many many years, uh, and it was but unfortunately labeled in the North Central area from Illinois. Well, it was mislabeled there. It was actually from uh, Marshall County, Kentucky. And Greg Perino indicated, he very astute, that the, uh, the base broke in ancient times due to mishandling. So the Paleo Indians, they didn't want to waste this beautiful point. So what they did was they went ahead and rebased it. They rebased the point and uh, reworked the base in Paleo times. And, and what a beautiful needle point. Um, what a beautifully well done point. And of course, in the Overstreet Guide, it is listed as classic form, which is kind of the classic form, fully fluted to the tip and um, kind of spreads out there in the, in the center of the point. So those are, uh, those are some. This one here is another great piece uh, I acquired from Lyle Nickel uh, some years ago. And uh, 
This is made out of Indiana hornstone, heavily patinated. You can see it's kind of almost whitish, uh, powdery whitish gray, whereas the real color of the flint would have been where this nick is here, more of a gray color, uh, Indiana hornstone gray, and it's all heavily patinated. And I got a little cortex on it, but this was a heavy duty spear point here. This thing was made for action uh, to bring down some sizable prey. Uh, and a, just a beautiful point from Lyle Nickel. And a uh, little over four inch long Clovis. That's a little four, over four inches long. A little over four inches long there. And um, gee, I forgot what the Folsom Ultra Thin is. It's over five inches, almost six. So uh, just, I wanted to share a, a beautiful frame of uh, Paleo points and Folsom Ultra Thin.